Hey guys, today we're going to be continuing on our uh, energy unit uh, by talking about the work energy theorem. So to start off, we're going to do um, a quick little derivation of the work kinetic energy theorem. And this is a slightly limited derivation because it uses kinematics, which is only for constant acceleration. Uh, but it turns out that the uh, results we get actually apply um, no matter what, even when you don't have a constant acceleration. Um, but the derivations for the general case are a lot more complex. So we're going to do a slightly more simple derivation today. And it starts off with um, an equation you know and you love, kinematics, V of squared equals VI squared plus 2A times delta X. And what we do with this is we can solve it for acceleration uh, by subtracting VI squared from VF squared and dividing that by 2 times delta X. Okay, so we've got an acceleration, and it equals um, this large term, um, but that large term is acceleration still. So if we wanted to change this um, into work, if we're thinking about work, how to get work from acceleration, you'd have to start by changing acceleration to a force. And the way you do that um, is by multiplying by m, because force equals mass times acceleration. So um, you get this, and you could erase your mass times acceleration and put force there instead. And then you've got this other term over there on the right-hand side. Now, if you wanted to make that into work, to go from force to work, you would have to multiply by the distance traveled. Okay, now the distance traveled would be equivalent, if we're going in a straight line, um, it's going to be equivalent to your delta x. So those two things can cancel out over here on this side, since they are equivalent. And we end up um, with force times distance, which is the same thing as work, equals uh, Vf squared minus Vi squared over 2 times m. Now, that might not look like too much. But if we, re if we rewrite it a different way, we're going to see something else. So we leave work as is, but we're going to pull that half out and multiply it by the m, and then uh, distribute it out to the vf squared and the vi squared. So you get 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. Now you may already be familiar with the equation for kinetic energy. The equation for kinetic energy, I'm going to write over here in this box, is 1 half times mv squared, which looks shockingly similar to these terms over here. So what you could do is rewrite this as work equals kinetic energy, which we're going to leave as a K. Sorry, I wrote KE because I'm used to my on-level class. Uh, work equals kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial, which is the same thing as change in kinetic energy. And this is, in essence, what the work, er, the work energy theorem is for kinetic energy specifically. It says that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. If you do work on an object, you are changing its kinetic energy by exactly that amount, um, an amount equal to your work. Okay, so that's a quick derivation for the work energy theorem, but the whole thing that you need to know is that work equals change in kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. Now, another quick thing to note, um, it doesn't really have too much meaning, uh, but it is, uh, slightly interesting. Uh, the kinetic energy is actually the uh, integral of momentum. If you know momentum, which we haven't learned yet, and you take the integral of it, dv, so integral of p dv, you would get kinetic energy because mass is not dependent on velocity, um, but velocity is, so you do v squared divided by 2. That's your kinetic energy. Um, so it's another kind of way to derive it, but there's no physical reason to do it that way. Um, like there's no reason that we know of um, yet in this class that uh, momentum would be the integral, or sorry, the integral of momentum would be kinetic energy. It's just an interesting relationship um, that exists. So I like to point it out. But the big deal today for problem solving is using our work kinetic energy theorem uh, to solve problems. So a couple of things about the work. The work is a scalar because it's the dot product of f and d. So it's just a numerical value. And as such, it can either be greater than 0, it can be equal to 0, 
or it can be less than zero. And here's what each of these cases mean. If your work is greater than zero, you are adding energy to a system. So for example, if I do work on a box and I do positive work, I'm going to add energy to it. And what that does is it speeds it up, okay, because we're talking about kinetic energy specifically today. So if we add energy, it's going to speed up. Now work can equal zero, which means um, energy of the system stays the same. And it's going to stay at the same speed. Or you can have work is less than zero, it's negative. Okay, when that happens, you are subtracting energy from the system. And what that looks like for kinetic energy is slowing it down. So if your work is positive, you're speeding up and adding energy. If your work is negative, you're slowing down and subtracting energy. If you're not doing any work, then the energy doesn't change at all. And the example problem we're going to do with this um, comes from your textbook. It is exercise 45, which is in 6.4, or section 6.4, um, back in the problems at the end of the chapter. And it says a force in the x direction with magnitude um, f of x equals 18 newtons minus 0.53 newtons per meter x is applied to a 6 kilogram box that is sitting on the horizontal frictionless surface of a frozen lake. fx is the only horizontal force on the box. If the box is initially at rest at x equals 0, what is the speed after it has traveled 14 meters? Okay, so there's really two ways to approach this. You can approach this using a forces and kinematic standpoint. That's not what we're going for today. Um, it is valid, but today we're trying to uh, practice the work energy theorem, so that's what we're going to use. And the work energy theorem says that the work done equals the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so the change in kinetic energy is just the final minus the initial. And we're looking for the final because we need the speed. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the equation for kinetic energy there. It's 1 half mv squared minus um, the kinetic energy initial because this is kinetic final minus kinetic initial. And the initial kinetic energy has to be 0 because it's at rest. So you uh, put that over there. And then you need the work. To find work, you've got to know the definition of work. When work is a function, it's the integral. Um, dot dx from position 1 to position 2. Now it starts off at position 0, x equals 0, and ends up at position x equals 14. So that's going to be our integral there. But we're going to have to plug the force function in. So we've got integral from 0 to 14 of 18, and I'm going to leave off units, minus 0.53 um, x. From 0 to 14 equals one-half, the mass is six times v squared. So the first thing we need to do, oh, I forgot my dx. First thing we need to do is solve this integral. When you integrate that, you're gonna get 18x minus 0.53 over two times x squared. And that goes from zero to 14. And that equals one-half times six is three v squared. Okay, so we gotta plug 14 into this stuff and zero, but zero is gonna cancel out the whole term down there. So we got 14 times 18, or 18 times 14, minus 0.53 over 2 times 14 squared equals 3v squared, which comes out to be 200.06 um, equals 3v squared divided by 3. And you'll get 66.7 equals v squared, and then you got to take the square root of that, which is going to give you 8.17 meters per second. All right, so really the tricky part about this, and it's not even that tricky, is knowing that your work comes from this integral and knowing that your change in kinetic energy is based on that one-half mv squared for both the final and the initial. So that gives you a few problems to do out of your textbook. Those are listed for you in classroom. Uh, please let me know if you got any questions. I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, I'll be glad when you're back.